Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? Hello, your boy, it's me, Jerry Alexander Newsom with reallifetrading.com. It is July the 5th, 2017. I hope all of you had a tremendous, fantastic, and wonderful 4th of July holiday weekend. Happy birthday, America. Hope you uh, had a great birthday. <laughs> so it is, of course, Wednesday, and today I'm going to be spelling it W-I-N. SDAY snag 2.19R on some day trades. Today we'll be talking about those. The SPY not too much happening right now. So really, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday market was closed. Monday didn't really do very much. Today so far we're about to close with a new white soldier candle. Um, if we close above 243.84, I'm still a bit more bullish on the SPY, but had a great pullback into the moving averages. The other broader ETFs again, not a whole heck of a lot going down. Really nice new white soldier candle on the queues. This is going to become a very pivotal location as we have bounced off this price before and it does look a little head and shoulder pattern, double top pattern type of thing. Tomorrow's gonna be a very important day, but some volume is coming in today. It'll be interesting to see exactly how far it moves. But just looking at the queues, that 100 is gonna be an ordeal for sure. Don't be afraid of trading it bearish down here. Just keep an eye and find out what happens from here. Let's look at some stocks that were requested and there were a lot of them. AMD, listen closely on this one because this has done exactly what we talked about. Had a white candle gapping up right here. What type of gap is that? Retest gap. What did it do? Retest. And so now today is a beautiful one white soldier candle with an increase in volume. AMD looks pretty good on that retest and uh, Looks good if it can continue higher tomorrow. Next on the list was CMG, Chipotle, and Chipotle is breaking or has broken a little bit lower since this beautiful and flawless bearish gap and go on the 20th of June. Here's the weekly chart on Chipotle and the weekly chart also we traded right into the 100 simple moving average and rolled over a little bit. So what does Chipotle do from here? You know, I'm not entirely sure. Um, this $400 area, is likely going to be a good support. I'm interested to see if and when it bounces. Here's your monthly chart on Chipotle and there's a 100 simple at 383.60. So if it's going to bounce, it'll be around this general area. Uh, unless of course it doesn't. So that's my thoughts on CMG. Bank of America, a few traders making a dollar or two on BAC. Next target for me is the 200 simple on also a monthly chart, $26.50. Here's the daily time frame. And the daily time frame, this is a trade that we're looking at on Finance Friday just last week. For those who subscribe to the Afternoon Swing Trading Floor, thank you very much. So BAC had a very, very nice, well, retest gap, uh, white candle gapping up. Uh, and then what did it do? Well, crazy enough, it pulled back into old resistance, new support, and it bounced. So if you got a chance to play 2418 by 2346, you're already up about an R on Bank of America. Nice little gap, nice move. And it does look to me, at least, like it's going to go likely just a tad higher. A good retest gap, it did retest. Here's the exponential moving averages. We made a higher high and a higher low. BAC looks pretty good at the present moment in time, as does Citigroup. So Citigroup, uh, I know my buddy Adam is in a trade on this one and he posted uh, a really nice text message the other day. I posted that one on Slack and Facebook, but Citigroup, my good buddy Ahmed, who's a brand new to real life trading, making over 200% on Citigroup. So overall, looking good, right? This is a weekly chart and uh, it's got some room to make up from its previous all-time highs, it's safe to say. It's been higher before. So coming back over here to the daily chart on Citigroup, it's a nice little breakout. It is a retest gap. So if you're not in, just look to play some type of retest on Citigroup. Here's Goldman Sachs, circus symbol GS. Goldman Sachs stuck in between long-term moving averages. I'm gonna look at this one on Friday for Finance Friday to see if there's a good straddle strangle play on Goldman Sachs. Back in the end of June, got into a bull put spread uh, that actually is over earnings. So I'm trying to see if we can close that one out before earnings for a small profit. But if not, as long as Goldman Sachs doesn't open below 210 on an earnings gap, then it should work out okay. But if it does, I think an unravel would actually work out pretty feastfully because that would be a phenomenal gap on Goldman Sachs. Speaking of phenomenal gaps, there are a lot of them today. Nike is the one that we got one R on. White candle gapping down, that's a bearish gap and go. Here's the five minute chart with the extended hours turned on. And you can probably guess 
how I played Nike. Um, nice little pre-market support. There was the support. Had a stop right there. I shorted with a breakdown of that support right there. Uh, 28, uh, sorry, 58.25 by 58.60 was my setup on Nike. And I got trailed out right about here for just a tad over an R on ticker symbol NKE. And then the other one uh, was on Tesla. And this is one that we did call out and make official. In fact, we did some great analysis on this one just last week. Uh, last week being Transportation Thursday. And the analysis was this. Here is the support. And if I turn on the exponential moving averages, I did buy puts on Friday on Tesla and uh, lost an R. Uh, actually, I lost 0.7 R on that trade because our analysis was if it broke down, I was looking for it to retest and roll over and roll over. It did in a big way today, much bigger than expected. So black candle gapping down, right? That is a retest gap. So if I turn on the five minute chart, make sure to post in the comment section below if you can see <laughs> the retest on Tesla. So the first one that we played was right here, pin it pattern, and that was the retest right there. We shorted it there with a stop there. That worked out for an R. Here's another retest. Here's the other retest. Had some beautiful rollers in the afternoon. Tesla just making a mockery of the bulls today. And uh, really at this particular point in time, everyone's excited to see where this thing exactly pauses at. Here's the 100 simple moving average. That's probably the next target if and when it can retest. A lot of people long Tesla and uh, it's okay. I think longer term, this baby bounces, but this pullback is serious. This is, this is a serious pullback. So coming into that 100 simple moving average, let's look to buy the dip on Tesla. As long as we stay above 291 on Tesla, I still remain personally bullish on that one overall. Got a few more to look at. Let's look at them real quick. Here's circuit symbol FB for Facebook. I got Ron has a 146 put sale expiring Friday. Dean has a 145 put sale expiring in two weeks. I got the 140, uh, 150, 150-160 bear call spread expiring this Friday on Facebook. Um, so that one looks like it's going to work out okay. Here's Disney, ticker symbol DIS. And Disney had a big selling candle today. Had a nice gap on Monday. A lot of traders are making a dollar or two on Disney. Robert, I hope you hit your two-hour target on Disney uh, yesterday, yesterday being Monday. But I'm in a 101-100 July week one bull put spread that expires this Friday. So I don't think that'll be an issue. And if it really breaks below 102, I'll just exit it. But only two days left. I'm really not generally concerned about that particular trade overall. Baidu, so here's BIDU. This one did have a nice gap this morning. Keep your eyes on Baidu, right? The last time I was looking at Baidu, it had a nice new white soldier gap here on the 19th of June. There a nice little upper shadow, and it did break higher on the 21st of June, rotated. So now it formed a little bit of a double bottom, right? Here's the weekly. Everyone and their mom keeping an eye out of this triangle breaking out, and we did have a gap today. So maybe just maybe it's about to happen. So feel free to, again to continue to keep your eyes on Baidu because there's going to be a breakout at some point on some level and this just might be it. Let's look at a few more. Uh, trigger symbol HL. Here is HL and HL not doing too much. Uh, most metal stocks coming down into a support so we can see a little bit of a support right here around $4.50 on ticker symbol HL. Otherwise it's not doing a whole heck of a lot but there's the support. There's the 100 simple moving average. And most gold, silver, and metal stocks have slowly and just ever so gracefully continued a little bit lower. Here's silver, ticker symbol SLV. So if you're looking at playing any metal stock, look for good support and look to buy low, sell high. Because as of this week, with the market being open on Monday, we have had a lot of gaps. I'm looking to buy some more physical silver probably sometime in the next week or so. But this was a nice move, good gap, good volume. It is a buy low, sell high. Most metal stocks that I'm playing are longer term. I'll hold until I make money, buy low, sell high out of support, see what happens. So that's kind of my thoughts on silver. Here's General Motors, which is not a lot different. General Motors, very, very sideways for a long time now. You got the 200 simple moving average acting as a little bit of a support. We did make a higher high and a higher low, but we were down pretty big today. So this could be the retest. There's a few people looking at seeing if this is going to be an inverted head and shoulders pattern. It did break out. Yesterday, yesterday being Monday, we did retest today. So if we might start making some higher highs and higher lows, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday being today, Thursday being tomorrow, Friday, or sometime next week, I think General Motors could slowly, ever so slightly continue higher up into about 38.06. With the market being closed, let's look at just a few more. Here's Twitter, ticker symbol TWTR. We are in bearish on Twitter right now. 
got triggered in 1815 by 1905. I'm going to see how long this stair step pattern hangs out here on the 200 and something moving average, but I won't be giving it much more time to hang out there without falling a little bit lower. Peter wanted to look at USAT and USAT, uh, USA Technologies. Here's the weekly time frame. And again, this 100 simple moving average is about 413. Here's a nice little double bottom down here on the weekly chart. It did close. We did kind of retest and it is continuing a little bit higher. So uh, Peter's analysis, we're looking for it to trade back down to about 430 and then buy the dip. Peter, overall, with that 100 simple looking the way it is, that, my friend, looks pretty good. Let's go look at Whirlpool. Check some WHR, Whirlpool, not doing all that much. Broke out of above a resistance. It's hanging out above resistance. Here's the daily chart. Earnings are in a few weeks. It looks more bullish than bearish to me. Uh, here's your moving averages. I like the perfect, almost five cents away from a perfect doji on Friday. We made a higher high and a higher high, a higher high and a higher low today on Whirlpool. Overall, uh, it's a blue chip buy, buy low hold for a long time and make some money off of dividends and hopefully the stock will go higher type of stock. But overall, it does look pretty bullish um, on both the weekly and the daily. I like the fact that it closed above that resistance. So uh, at 191.13, so overall it looks pretty nice. Lockheed Martin, here's LNT. So Lockheed Martin, a beautiful white candle gapping up. That was a retest gap. Had a good bullish move today. Earnings are coming up right around the corner. Earnings season is right around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So for all those traders who did sign up before Sunday, remember I mentioned that I would make sure I sent out a very valuable email regarding day trading weekly options. So that has gone out. If you did not receive that and you are a subscriber to one of the trading rooms, email me, let me know. But I think you all got it on Sunday. And for those who didn't subscribe, hey, it's totally cool. I still love you. Let's continue to enrich lives together, right? Um, earnings season is around the corner, so there's going to be tons of gaps, tons of swing trading opportunities, tons of opportunities to make money in general, and a lot of opportunities for us to follow our trading plans. Let's look at just two more really quick here. Uh, Walmart, O'Reilly, and AutoZone. I can't count. That's three. So here's Walmart. Walmart, black candle gapping down. Nice candle, good volume. It's going to take some time for it to fill that gap. So buy low, sell high. But at some point, I do expect that one to fill. Longer term looks good. Here's Lulu. Lulu had a white candle gapping up the other day, which is a retest gap. So personally waiting for Lulu to do something like this or keep trading sideways a little bit longer and let it rest. Let some of these moving averages catch up with it. And then I'll take the breakout. But if it is a retest gap, I'm going to wait for it to rest and retest first. And then some of the gaps of the day that I miss. Here's one of them. O'Reilly Automotive. Ladies and gentlemen, feel free to take a picture of this gap. This is a phenomenal bearish gap and go, trapping a lot of people. You can see that we had a nice new white soldier candle yes, uh, the other day. We made a new higher high and a higher low on Monday. Beautiful gap down. I missed this trade only because I just didn't get filled. That's it. And I didn't, uh, I didn't take the secondary breakout because I was already in a trade. Here was the pre-market support. Entry was there. Stop was there. I was prepared to lose an R. I missed that by about 13 cents on a $200 stock. Would have been just an absolute monumental home run. Uh, what are you going to do? Sometimes you don't get filled. Uh, I was going to take this break out, but like I mentioned, I was already in another trade and I uh, didn't want to lose more than 2R in the first hour. So anyway, miss O'Reilly, but I hope some real life traders out there caught it. If you've been wanting or watching or learning about gaps, make sure to print this one out because that is a bearish gap and go of the ages. And uh, I just, it just didn't get filled. So that's going to happen on expensive stocks. But the fact is, if we can know what happened, why it happened, where it happened, that, my friends, is half the battle. It has been an absolute honor and privilege trading and traveling, leaving, flying out of Boston at about 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, headed back to Nashville, Tennessee. And I'll be in Nashville uh, until late July, where uh, I'm just going to go to Georgia for a few days just to visit some family. And then next travel Hopefully, it's going to be August, mid-August. I'll be going to Germany and the Czech Republic, but I'm not going to travel anywhere in July because June was pretty much miserable. So I'm already at 2.19 R for the month <laughs> for July. So if I can just take two more winning trades, I will already have beat my record for June. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys rock. I'll see you later. Until next time, love life, live life, and trade it. Bye.